Welcome to the beautiful Oregon coast and we're kicking off our Oregon coast coastal or postal tour here at the Cape Blanco Lighthouse. Cape Blanco is actually the westernmost point in Oregon. And this lighthouse is noted for being the oldest standing lighthouse on the Oregon coast, built in 1870. Um, their wife and the children lived with them, so half of it had two families, the other had, half had the boss. And they would have to collect rainwater to have a wash house, to collect water to, to wash laundry and, and have food. Uh, they had a barn here for their animals, for their butter and their milk and eggs. And they had some gardening going on over here, which is just up in that area there. This is the watch room, 1936 backwards to 1870. None of this existed. There wasn't electricity, there wasn't a generator, there wasn't this pole, there wasn't those panels. What you could see, what you could see, was a stationary lens up top. It was a Fresnel lens, and it was burning some pretty miserable oils. They started with lard oil, then they found they had to go to mineral, and then eventually they went to petroleum. All three of those oils are pretty nasty oils. Okay, now, 1915. 36, prior to 1936, those two guys were coming upstairs, stationary lens that was beat up all night by the winds. They would have to douse the wick, refill the, the reservoir, and clean this puppy inside and out meticulously, getting it ready for the next night's crew. And remember, it was stationary, so they were able to get in there and do the job that they needed to do, and then uh, a clean lens isn't going to help you, however, if you don't have clean windows. And if you look around here, uh, inside and outside, that would have been quite the task, especially when the winds were really blowing here. And that, but that was part of the job, too. Really glad that we timed it well and were able to get a tour. Couple quick facts on this one. The lighthouse itself is 18 meters tall. Thanks to the fact that it's up on the cape here, it actually stands 78 meters or 256 feet above the ocean. And it was added to the U.S. National Register of Historic Places in 1983. One last look at the lighthouse before we get back on the road to the next. So we have come north up the coast a little ways. We're now in Bandon, Oregon, and specifically we're at Bullard's Beach State Park where we're actually camping while on this leg of the tour. And we're visiting the Coquille River Lighthouse, which is one I've actually visited multiple times in the past. I'm gonna quickly throw up a photo here that I took in 2004 uh, before the lighthouse was painted to its current color scheme here, just so you can compare. Coquille River Lighthouse, the bugs out here are absolutely insane right now. So this is going to be a short little hit. Plus, we can't really get into it because it's all locked up. It's no longer in use. But built in 1896, of the eight, whew, those bugs are terrible. Of the eight lighthouses left on the Oregon coast, this one is the newest uh, of the construction. Tower's 46 feet tall. Anything else I'll throw in the description or in the comments or somewhere, but for now, that's it because these bugs are just insane. Next up is Hesita Head, just north of Florence, Oregon. This one was first lit in 1894. It's a no drone zone, which we say, boo! This one involves a little bit of a walk from the parking lot up to the lighthouse itself. So that gives me a little bit of time to talk about some of the interesting features of this site. So what we would learn is that the parking lot is situated where the lighthouse keepers used to keep their garden. 
And this pathway that we're on was actually the road that went from the garden area up to the lighthouse and their home. The lightkeeper's house was actually demolished in 1940. The house that we're coming up to here was home to the first and second lighthouse keeper assistants. And it now is a functioning bed and breakfast. I have no doubt that being a lighthouse keeper was tiring, lonely, stressful, and just surviving back in that era must have been difficult, but what a view you would have had from your front porch. Now, as I said, the house that was built for the first and second lighthouse keeper assistants is now a bed and breakfast. If you come in here between the time guests check out in the morning and check in the evening, you can actually poke your head in and get a quick tour. So having completed the brief tour of the first and second assistant's light uh, keeper house, now making our way back up the hill towards the lighthouse itself. Hesita Head is an absolutely beautiful lighthouse, not only because of the location, but because of the restoration work that took place here. Between 2011 and 2013, it was actually closed to the public for two years so that crews could come in and do everything they could to restore it as much as possible to its 1894 appearance. I want to show some of the renovations that are visible from the outside. On the left is a low-res picture I took way back in August of 2002. You can see that they have opened up the windows that had been previously blocked off. The roof of the workroom has been replaced. A lot of the small details above the windows and around the base of the tower have had their white paint removed to reveal their more natural colors. Final few facts on this one, that there is a first order Fresnel lens, giving it a range of 21 nautical miles or 39 kilometers. It has a white flash that goes off every 10 seconds. Now the reason it's got such a great range is because it's sitting up in that tower 17 meters high and its location above the ocean is actually 62 meters or 205 feet above the water. Another lighthouse checked off the list. Very picturesque lighthouse up here nestled on the cliff. Beautiful. I'm glad we stopped. Moving on north up the coast to Yaquina Bay Lighthouse here in the town of Newport, Oregon. Immediately, you'll notice this one is unique compared to the other lighthouses we visited because the light and the living quarters both share the same building. Yaquina Bay Light was in use for just three years before it was replaced by Yaquina Head just a bit north of here, which we're going to visit later in the video. Let's pop in and check out the inside. The lighthouse was actually dilapidated and scheduled for demolition in 1946, but the formation of the Lincoln County Historical Society saved it. They got some money raised, got a delay. By 51, it was facing demolition again. So this place has had a number of threats against it over the years before it was finally restored in 1974. That would have been... Uh quite the magnet for uh, urban exploration mm -hmm. back in that day, I Seems imagine. Seems to be I'm pretty lucky it's still here. The end of the road. This is it, eh? <laughs> There's the opening, anyway. 
The wind, did you see the winds down there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This eight-story steel tower dates from the era of 1906 to 1915 when the U.S. Coast Guard was using the lighthouse as a lookout and living quarters. Yaquina Bay is the only wooden lighthouse on the Oregon coast. In 1996, it was relit and remains a U.S. Coast Guard privately maintained navigation aid and displays a fixed white light that's visible for six miles. Now let's move further north up the coast and check out the lighthouse that made Yaquina Bay obsolete. Yaquina Heads next. I hope throughout the course of this video and the other videos in this series that you've come to understand how much I love the Oregon coast. And out of all the places on the Oregon coast, this is one of my favorites. Yaquina Head is the tallest lighthouse on the Oregon coast, standing 28 meters or 93 feet high. Now, on a previous trip, in fact, my most recent trip prior to this one in 2008, I was able to get on the tour and take the climb up to the top. I didn't get the best pictures in the world from up there, but I'm going to share them here with you so that you can kind of see what it looks like when you reach the top, a thing we weren't able to do on this trip. The keeper's dwellings, which once stood on the site, were demolished in 1984, having been pretty much boarded up and abandoned since the light was automated in 1966. Yaquina Head is a very popular destination, open during daylight hours, not only for the lighthouse, but also because of the amazing tide pools located nearby. Certainly check them out. Let's get on to the next one. And that next and final lighthouse that we're going to visit on this tour is Cape Mears near Tillamook, Oregon. This is the most unique approach to any of the lighthouses we've seen so far on this tour because you come in from above, looking right down at the lens at the end of this tunnel of trees. These two pictures that I took from LighthouseFriends.com show why it's such a unique approach to the lighthouse. Originally, the keeper's quarters were located about a thousand feet up this bluff where the modern day parking lot sits and the lighthouse was located at a lower elevation. The light was built in 1890 and was in use up until 1963, at which point an automated beacon was installed in a concrete blockhouse near the original tower. After it was decommissioned, the light sat abandoned until 1968 when the area was taken over by the Oregon State Parks Department. This workroom attached to the light is actually a replica that was built in 1978. It's not an exact duplicate because they moved the door to the south side of the building to make it easier for visitors. The original was located on the north. And speaking of those visitors, the light was once again open to the public in 1980. This seems like as good a place as any to wrap up our Oregon Coast Lighthouse Tour. We didn't get to see all of them. And of course we didn't get to do the drone footage of uh, Tillamook Rock that I wanted to, but that was purely a function of the weather, not a result of my being chicken to fly the drone out that far. So that's gonna wrap it up. Thank you for watching. Whoa, 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 <laughs> incoming, and it's still coming, whoa, whoa, whoa.
That's why you never turn your back on the ocean. <laughs> oh well.